Hello everyone, I'm Justin Grego, and I'm a Senior End User Computing Specialist Solutions Architect here at AWS. This is the first in a series of videos where I will walk you through a complete step-by-step -step deployment of Citrix DAS on Amazon Workspaces Core. This video will cover the first step in the process, with later videos covering the remaining steps. I'll start today by reviewing exactly what Citrix DAS on Amazon Workspaces Core is. We'll cover a high-level review of the prerequisites to get started. I'll cover a brief overview of the entire deployment process uh, before we get into a demonstration of the first deployment step, defining a resource location and deploying two Citrix Cloud Connectors on EC2. So what exactly is Amazon Workspaces Core? Um, this is a hybrid solution combining the best of both worlds from Citrix and Amazon Workspaces. Uh, you get the highly available managed infrastructure that Workspaces is known for. You remove our protocol and brokering and layer in Citrix's protocol, monitoring, and end user management solutions. You get their best of breed dynamic HDX protocol, all the accelerators for audio and video, as well as their support for a large number of endpoint peripherals. And what you get with Workspaces, again, is our managed infrastructure, the simplified choice uh, of desktop offerings, tailor suited for different end user uh, needs, uh, fixed and predictable pricing, uh, support for Microsoft M365 workloads, um, and it's all backed by our 99.9% .9 uptime SLA. So what are some of the requirements in order to get started with uh, Amazon Workspaces Core? Uh, the first is that you do need to be licensed for Citrix Cloud. This is a Citrix DAS, their cloud-based solution product. Um, so for those that are currently on Citrix CVAD or their on-prem solution, um, you do need to have licenses for Citrix Cloud. Um, this video assumes that you have the foundational AWS infrastructure already in place that you would need for a Workspaces environment. I mean, in the description below, we'll have some links to uh, the requirements from a workspaces perspective. Uh, but this includes things like a, a Amazon VPC with its subnets and routes and all, all the different bits and pieces that are you know, typical for deploying uh, machines on, on AWS. Um, and the key thing to note here is you also need routes to the internet, right? So that these machines can talk to um, Citrix Cloud as well as Active Directory um, so that these machines can register themselves within your Active Directory environment. Lastly, you'll need permissions within your AWS account uh, to create some IAM and access management roles um, that Citrix will assume in order to take actions on your behalf within your account um, to spin up and tear down workspaces and things of that nature. So at a high level, um, Citrix outlines uh, five basic steps that are required to get up and running um, with their solution on top of Workspaces Core. Um, the first time you come into the Citrix console, uh, and go into the, the section uh, dedicated to deploying Amazon Workspaces Core, you'll see these five uh, items not checked off um, waiting for you and, and to be guided through uh, the deployment process. Um, these five steps are creating a resource location. Again, this is defining where these resources are going to live um, and includes deploying cloud connectors, and that's what we're going to cover um, in today's video. Um, you then have to set up a connection between Citrix's account and your AWS account. You have to create a directory connection to let Citrix know, you know how you're going to be joining these machines to Active Directory. Um, you need to import an image, whether that's a server OS image or, or a desktop OS image. Um, you do need an image that's configured and ready to go with, uh, with Citrix. Um, and lastly is to set up your deployment. So how you're going to find what resources you assign to users and how users are going to uh, be allocated to those desktops. So with that, I'm going to switch over to my AWS and Citrix consoles and walk you through the process of, of getting started um, and deploying your resource locations. All right. So over here in the Citrix Cloud console, um, we're under the, the DAS tab, or the Desktop as a Service. I'm first going to show you where you can find the integration with Workspaces Core. Uh, this is under a new section called Quick Deploy, Amazon Workspaces Core. Um, and then if you click on getting started, what you'll see are the five steps that are required in order to uh, roll out this service. Uh, when you first come in here the first time, none of these will be checked off and it'll actually guide you through one by one um, going down each setting. Um, in this account, I do already have another environment stood up and so these boxes are already checked. Um, but what you'll see here is the first step um, is defining your Citrix resource location. And this is you know, a location where your, your desktops are gonna be, be hosted, um, which AWS region, um, which VPC, things like that. Um, so the first step is uh, within the Citrix DAS console is to go over to resource locations. Um, what you'll see here is that I do already have a resource location defined, but I'm gonna be creating a new one by clicking plus resource location. Uh, we're gonna call this one uh, demo video location. 
um, and clicking Save. And what you'll see when this comes up um, is that right now there are no cloud connectors or none of those proxy appliances that allow um, the, the virtual desktop agent within your workspaces to talk to the Citrix cloud platform um, and register themselves. Um, so when we click cloud connectors here, what you'll get is a download link that you're going to want to save for later. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to save it in a document for later. Um, and what we'll be doing is installing that on some EC2 instances to act as your cloud connector servers um, in just a moment. So over in AWS, uh, in the EC2 console, we're going to be launching our instances that we're going to be using for our cloud connectors. Um, so select launch instance. Uh, we'll give this uh, a tag or a name so that it's easy to identify it in your console. So we'll call it video demo cloud connector one. Um, these need to be Windows based. Um, you can pick the Windows operating system um, of your choice. Under instance type, I'm going to be picking um, a T3 large, so two CPU, eight gig of RAM. Um, I would suggest that you look at Citrix's documentation to determine you know, what size is going to meet the requirements of your environment, uh, just based on their best practices and their documentation. Um, I'm going to be creating a new key pair. Um, this will allow me to uh, get the credentials in order to get onto this machine, um, RDP into it, join it to my domain, install the cloud um, connector software, and get it ready to go um, for workspaces. So I'm going to create a new key pair. We'll call this one video demo keys. Um, click uh, create key pair and make sure you save this into a location that you'll uh, have access to um, in a little bit. Um, under networking settings, um, you want to place these cloud connectors into uh, the appropriate VPC if you have multiple VPCs in your account. Um, these can be the same VPCs that your workspaces are going to be in. Um, it could be a different VPC. Um, the requirement is just that the, the workspaces will need um, connectivity and routes in order to get to those cloud connectors. Um, so the VDA can talk to them, register itself, and get um, uh, communicating out to the Citrix cloud. Um, under security groups, if you have an existing security group that you want to attach, this is where you would select that. Um, in any case, for at the bare minimum, we're going to want to make sure that we do have RDP access in, again, so that we can get onto this machine, um, install the cloud connector, and, and move on. Um, so with that, we'll click Launch Instance. All right. So now that that's launching, what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the EC2 console, and we're going to launch a second instance to, to be our second cloud connector. So we'll name this again Video Demo Cloud Connector 2. Um, we're going to pick the same base image and, and pretty much all the same settings as before, uh, with one exception. Um, in this case, we're going to be picking a, a different subnet to put this machine into. Uh, reason being, by putting it in a different availability zone and a different subnet, we have some resiliency and high availability. Um, should an availability, goes, availability zone go down, um, the cloud connector in that second availability zone will be able to pick up the slack and continue to, to get your users in. This time we're going to select the key pair that we already downloaded and created in the last step. Um, and then we're going to edit the networking settings. And this time um, we're going to change from um, US East 1C to, to 1A in this case. Um, and we'll use um, the same security group that we had uh, created earlier as well. And we're going to launch that instance. So at this point, um, if you go back to the EC2 console, you'll see that these machines are, are starting up. Um, and in fact, they're both already up and running. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself onto my jump box that's on the same network as these machines, um, which allows me to RDP into them. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to first grab uh, the IP address of one of these two machines. Um, in terms of credentials, um, we got to make sure that we are connecting as the local administrator account. Because at this point, it's not in your domain. Um, so back in the EC2 console, what you can do is under connect um, RDP client, we want to um, get the admin password. So when you click get password, it's going to say the password is not available. Uh, at this point, you do have to wait a few minutes uh, for this password to become available. Um, and then what we'll use is that key file that we generated, early, generated earlier um, in order to get access to this password and put it into the RDP client. Um, so at this point, I'm going to pause the recording, and we'll come back in a few minutes when we're ready to pick up with the next step. 
All right, at this point, our, our Windows password is ready um, and stored within EC2. Um, so in order to get access to that password, first we're going to upload our private key file um, that we generated earlier. We're going to use that to decrypt the password, and that's going to give us the local admin password of this box, which we'll copy to our clipboard. And we'll head back over to our junk box. Um, we'll put in that password. And we'll remotely connect into uh, that desktop in order to join it to our domain, uh, give it a reboot, um, and then what we'll do is install um, that Cloud Connector software link that we had um, grabbed earlier uh, and saved away uh, for the installation step. All right, so here we are logging onto the desktop. Um, and once we're fully on the machine, we're going to go into the system options. And we're going to go in and change the computer name to how it will appear in, in our domain and add it to our Active Directory domain. Uh, put in the credentials for the user account that has access to add machines to the domain. Wait for the reboot uh, to come up and then initiate a reboot. Once the reboot is done, we're going to log back on. We're going to download the Cloud Connector software using that link that we saved earlier, and we're going to launch that. Um, first thing that you'll notice once this opens up is that you need to sign in to your Citrix Cloud tenant. Um, in order to tell the Cloud Connector software you know, who you are and, and which account you should be talking to, um, once we've signed in, we can close that window, and you'll notice back in the Cloud Connector installer, you'll see all the accounts you have access to. Um, you'll also see within that account the resource location that we had created earlier, and that's what we're going to choose when we begin the installation. Um, so now at this point, it's going to begin the installation of the Cloud Connector software. Um, it's going to register itself with that resource location within Citrix Cloud. Um, and then once it's done, it's going to want to do some upgrades. And this will take a few minutes, so this is a good time to head over to your other machine, um, initiate the installation on your second Cloud Connector, and get that process going. Once both are done, you can head back into the resource locations within Citrix DAS. Um, you'll now see under demo video location that we have two cloud connectors. Uh, the first is green, meaning it's fully up, fully updated and ready. Um, the second, it's spinning, meaning it's still coming up, but will be available soon. All right, and that wraps up our visual walkthrough of the first step of deploying Citrix DAS on Workspaces Core. In this video, we covered some of the prerequisites and just a high-level overview of the solution. And we walked through the deployment of that first step of, of your journey on deploying Workspaces Core in which we deployed some Citrix Cloud Connectors on EC2. Um, this, again, is the first in a series of videos in which we'll cover the end-to-end -end visual setup of the solution. Um, so look forward to some additional follow-up videos where we go through the last four steps um, in, the, in the deployment process. In the meantime, um, what you see on the screen and in the description of the video below are some uh, articles and links to more resources around uh, AWS EUC uh, including some um, community articles, as well as our uh, video series that you'll see on, on YouTube. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.